Hey, and welcome to another episode of the Unspoken Truths of Digital Leadership, Living the Leadership Values. Well, I guess we'll talk about the unspoken truths of leadership, the dark side and the learnings from dealing with conflict with integrity. And today, I have a very special guest with me. He is the founder of Podcast Bay Productions and entrepreneur, Scott Doucette. Hey, nice to, nice to be here. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Thanks, Scott, for coming on. I appreciate it. Now it's good to so, be here. I can't wait to dig in, man. Leadership is a fun topic for me. Well, especially that you don't like talking about yourself as well. You told me <laughs> briefly, you said you don't like talking about yourself. So here we are doing a deep dive interview about who Scott is and how you got to where you are today. Oh, God. It's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be good. So, Scott, for those that don't know who you are, please give us a, a brief introduction about how you got into doing podcasting. Like, Yeah, okay. So 15 years old, I had a job at a radio station, and it was my first real job. And I learned all of like the technical aspects, but realized I did not like waking up at 5 in the morning on the weekends as a teenager to go sit in a glass room and speak to myself till noon. Like I had much bigger things I wanted to do, like party and sleep in. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so sounds, not sounds like a normal teenager. Oh, thing yeah. To do. yeah. Yeah. And so not seeing the, uh, the opportunity that was in front of me, I quit that job and I bounced around. I did music, played in bands and things like that all through high school and like my young adulthood and, um, but had always retail jobs always got a retail job and ended up every time I got a retail job being pushed up into supervisory positions, assistant manager positions, manager positions. At one point they wanted me to be a district manager and I didn't even have a driver's license because that's how much I slacked off in life, you know? And I was like, that's cool, but I can't drive to anywhere in my district. So you're looking at the wrong candidate and they're like, no, you'll get one. And I'm like, bet you I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so like, cause I, I hated retail. I, despised retail at the time and I every time I got put into a management position as much as I loved the team and nurturing and caring for the team I usually grew to hate the people on top of me like my, mm. my regional managers my district managers because they never seemed like they knew what they were talking about man and uh, so I quit just quit working one day and I was like you know what I'm just gonna go out there and start a business um, got a few gigs doing like motivational speaking, talking about work ethic and drive and, and all of that. Um, did some school runs talking about like how you perceive yourself as true, like no matter what it is and attitude and kind of approaching life with more of a don't let don't do what I did because like literally like I could be a radio star right now. And uh, I guess that that just always kind of stayed with me because a friend of mine by the name of Mark Mowinney. Um, he lives like a couple hours from me and I ran into him when I wanted to start my business and he didn't have anything to offer me. And then when we reconvened a couple of months later, he had started podcasting and I was like, he's like, you know, your business would do really well with podcasts. It could be like a speaker's CV. People could come see what you're all about and decide from there whether or not to book you. And my first thought was, okay, I'm never going to get another booking again if I start a podcast because of who I am and how I come off on the air and everything. Like I'm painfully me. There's no professional image to be, to be set. Right. And he was like, no, no, it doesn't matter. I bet you people will resonate. And so I started doing it and then everything flooded back to me from my radio station experience. I was like, screw doing a podcast. I want to create these for other people. This is fun. This is like just tinkering and messing around. And, you know, like I can sit in my basement in my jammies and in a dark room and just like remove ums and ahs and clicks and pops and snorts and laughter and not deafen people like this is all right. I like this. So his brother who had a podcast production company kind of took me in under like an apprenticeship for a little while. And then I just kind of branched out on my own and started Podcast Bay Productions and it it grew and then I ended up in management again and <laughs> had to in now own, in your own management. Yeah, yeah. And and so now I had to learn 
how to be a manager who enjoyed the position. And so that is kind of how I got my start. And we've been doing this for, for quite some time now. I think we started in 20, 2015, 2016. Like it's been, it's been a time. So <laughs> I know it's been a few years. That's for sure. I don't have the exact date written down, but I just, I just kind of fly, man. And I, I figure it out as I go. But funny enough, it comes full circle because I have two kids now. I have a wife now and I work from home. So I needed to get out of the house. I went and applied at a part-time job at a luggage store because no one's traveling right now. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, hey, this will be slow. It'll be good. I'll be able to just like come in here and relax a little bit because no one's traveling. And uh, so within three weeks, I was offered the management position in that job. So now I'm a manager in a retail establishment and it is fun, man. My store is top five in their top or is number five in their top 100. My team love me. My district manager, not so much, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's really good. And, and instead of like loathing where I am now, I'm now running two teams and just loving it, loving it. Like it, it's a blast. <laughs> Comes full circle then. Yeah, it, it usually does. It does if you look for it. <laughs> well, you always, you always find what you look for. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's good or bad. Like if I wanted to hate my jobs, I could 100% tomorrow. Yeah, like, and you could always look for the bad in, in anything, right? But if you oh, look yeah. for the good, you'll find the good. Yeah, it's true. And it was, a, it was a long time coming, but I learned that lesson. And so now it's been about positioning myself into how I want to show up as a leader every day and who I want to be and the values I want to carry through and instill in my teams and all of that. And that has been where the detail work is. And that's been where the fun really is. It's like, okay, we, I've now figured out like 20 years later that I am in fact a leader. Let's embrace this now, figure out how to do this right. <laughs> well, oftentimes we don't call ourselves a leader or we don't put that title on us. We, we choose to, we choose to lead, but that title just comes with what we do, mm -hmm. right? Just to describe, it's it's similar to how people say, you know, you're a business owner. It's like, well, yeah, you're a business owner, but you're more than a business owner. You're an entrepreneur. <laughs> you're a problem solver. You're an accountant. Mm -hmm. You're marketing. You're sales. You're everything. You're an entire entity. Yeah, like there mind. is no such box category that this more than not a fan of boxing people with titles and labels as well right so yeah. i often tend tend to get away with that as much as i can but because you need to tell people what you stand for what you do <laughs> what do you do i don't know you asked for a bio and i was like i'll get that to you and never did because i can't i can't encapsulate a being in three paragraphs john it just can't happen there's too much or too little like i don't know <laughs> Just for people to understand and get a feel for who you and what you do, right? It's just yeah. like that. Therefore, that's why titles come. But your leadership uh, values, and I, I'm aware of because I'm in the community, but also you're creating something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us more about what you're working on, and yeah. yeah. So how that came about? I like last time I, I stopped a podcast, I was like, okay, I'm not going to podcast anymore. I'm done. I'm tired of it. I love working on them for other people, but I just, I always get to a point where I feel like I've exhausted whatever topic I'm on and it gets boring for me. So I said, I'm not going to do another show until life pulls me that way. And when I had my kids, young men started coming over to talk to me, to ask me like, Hey man, how what's it like? I'm terrified. My dad took off on me. I don't know if I'm going to be a good dad. Like, should I even stay in the picture? Cause I'm an unhealthy person. Like, and just all these things. And I was like, I noticed myself having really important conversations on repeat with the same type of individual who is essentially me. You know, like I don't have, I had a father figure step in when I was young, but like I, my real dad was definitely MIA for most of my life. And the memories I do have of him were not healthy or constructive for the most part. Um, although in my adult life, some of his teachings have served me. He's a frugal man. And so like I've been using some of his strategies, but so like 
when I was having these conversations, I was like, man, this is really important stuff. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start a podcast and see how it goes. But then single guys who didn't have families started reaching out to me as well. So I started this podcast called Fathership and it was all about parenthood. But then guys who were like, man, like you and your wife are awesome together. Like you guys are beautiful. You're perfect. You, you seem so happy. Um, I would love that. And they started being like, how do I attract that person, that one? And I'm like, I don't know stalk them for 10 years like that's what i did like <laughs> not actually stalk but like we were friends for a long time and we knew each other really well and people started being like oh man you're getting like your physical shape is is getting better like i want to start doing that how do i do that i realized fathership again was very closed off if i felt boxed in and so i just changed the group name to the knighthood and a lot of that was that I want to be a man of genuine quality. I want to be a man who puts his wishes into action. Like if wishes were fishes, we'd all have an aquarium, man, a beautiful one. But we, you have to actually do something with the wish to create something further. And so like it's one thing for me to wish I didn't have a beer gut. It's another thing for me to get up and do push-ups and sit-ups every day. And so I started holding myself accountable in that group and being like, all right, guys, I'm destroying my dad bod. Like we're getting rid of this sucker. And within a month I had lost 20 pounds and started looking in my opinion, pretty good. Like the best I've looked since my teens. Um, and then other guys were like, Hey, I want to do that too. And then we started discussing conduct values. Like what is it about your values that, creates how you conduct yourself. We've talked about the father son relationships that we've had. We've talked about um, self worth and being the nice guy and giving too much of yourself to your partner, much to your own detriment. Like we've gone into some pretty heavy topics and all of it is pretty much just me saying like, I want to do better here. So I'm going to go first and you guys watch, see if I crash and burn and decide if you're leaping or not. <laughs> and so like, I call it like a men's group. It's called the knighthood. We're growing by invite only. I'm planning to do a whole Knights Templar thing where <laughs> on the 13th of every month, I'm going to let the guys in the group invite one person. So we're kind of going to grow the way the Knights Templar died. Uh, we're all going to open letters and on the 13th and get her done. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah, like we're going to grow that way. And there's going to be challenges that guys can participate in. And there's going to be all kinds of stuff like that, that we're going to do um, units and courses and cool stuff about like self-awareness, growth. There's going to be competitions in there. Like we're going to pin some guys against each other and see how they do in, in like different convers like different types of, of situations. I think I want to challenge my buddy Josh to an ax throwing competition at some point. And we're going to, we're going to get a live of that. We're going to see just who the better ax thrower is so we can hold that against one another for the rest of our lives. But <laughs> we just want to start having fun as guys, but holding <clears throat> each other to a higher standard. We want to create gentlemen. We want to bring chivalry, not the whole jousting and sword fighting part, although that would be cool, but the chivalrous behavior, that gentleman's code, that what makes a true gentleman. We want to bring that back and put that, not that it ever goes out of style, but definitely less and less men are striving to be that. And so we want to, we want to become that and instill that upon our sons and our friends and our family. Why well, I've noticed is also the a lot of people, men generally, are struggling with their personal values true very like true. they're very lost and stuck especially in this day and age compared to it was 10 years ago because there's so much noise now when when now you just open up you know facebook or social media and you're just like lost in there well yeah and i'm finding too that a lot of what it means to be a man in general is being redefined every day. We're becoming more inclusive. We're becoming more open-minded. It's a lot less straight and narrow. This is who you are. This is what you stand for. This is, this is, this is. And I'm not interested in telling a person like, yes or no, you can or cannot wear dresses or yes or no, you can or cannot do makeup or yes or no, you are or are not a man or a woman. I'm not interested in that at all. What a, you know, everyone, 
can and should be exactly who they feel like they are and want to be. However, if there are people out there who want to be gentlemen, that is who I want to talk to because I could use some help in that department too. So, <laughs> <laughs> but what I loved about the, um, what you're creating as well is instilling back the code of honor and integrity, especially was mm -hmm. is a big one because it seems again, a lot of people are missing these essential values that we previously had, or at least are, you know, previously in generations above us has had, right. Mm -hmm fading away as as you know as time goes on yeah that's integrity is big but more important than integrity i think for me at least is self-awareness you mentioned it as well a lot of people are lost they don't understand and again with the redesigning and redefining of, of men a lot of the things that make us men are being demonized or are being um made to feel like we're wrong for feeling that way or being that way. And so like, I know gentlemen within that group who are the most kind, caring, compassionate individuals I've ever met in my life, caregivers, nurturers, and still men, uh, inexplicably, undeniably men. Whereas myself, I am more of, I'm a, I'm a dominant figure. Okay. I am that person who, if I'm going to go into something, I'm going in, all the way, or I'm not going in at all. I am that person who I love to compete. I love to win. I love to, and not in like a sleazy, nasty, unsportsmanlike way, but like if you and I are getting into a wrestling match tomorrow, like my goal is to beat you. I'm not there to play. Like I want to, I want to win. And so a lot of those types of things are becoming less acceptable. It's less acceptable to be dominant. It's less acceptable to be competitive. And so a lot of guys are losing their values because they feel like they're wrong for having those values. Mm -hmm. Which is why, in my opinion, sports is great. Sports give that, that young man who wants to compete and wants to be aggressive and wants a goal to shoot for a place to do it. You know, like uh, you look at a hockey player, they're usually very respectable young men and women, but they they have that drive. They have that that outlet where they can just give it all in and smash somebody's face into the boards and skate as hard as they can for, you know, a couple minutes at a time and then sit down, take a break, yell at each other and chirp each other and then get back out there and kill each other again, you know, and it's controlled. So when they're off the ice, they don't need to do that in their, in their day-to-day -day life anymore, you know? And so that's kind of part of my objective, I guess, with this whole thing is yes, the honor code is there. The code of conduct is there. That's what we're going to be working on this week is our code of conduct. Like, how do we want to conduct ourselves in specific situations? But as much as I can be loving and nurturing and caring and playful with my kids, and as much as I can be intimate and thoughtful with my wife, and as much as I can be bold and courageous in my businesses, I still need a place where I can beat people up. And so, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm going to be going into jujitsu when this whole COVID thing, you know, lifts. One of the guys in the group, in the men's group, uh, is in jujitsu and he's about an hour and 15 minutes away from me. I'm going to go let him literally kick my ass um, because I have no mixed martial arts experience and he's like really well versed in this. So I'm just going to go in there and let him hand it to me because a couple, I'm going to fight him with everything I've got, but it's going to be this nasty brawl where I have no technique and he's just going to finesse the crap out of me. But the reason I do that is one, I'm going to be humbled right out. Like I'm not going to give anybody lip the rest of the day. <laughs> We're just going to be like, yes, sir. Yes, man. It's cool. Don't worry. Like I'll be put in my place, but also like it'll get some of that pent up aggression, that dominance, that need to, to compete out of my system so that when I get back to my day-to-day -day life, none of that is getting in the way, you know? So I think guys are having a really hard time. Well, people in general, but I, I've noticed it most among men because that's where I spend a lot of my time. They're having a, a hard time accepting that it's who they are. They're having a hard time accepting that it's okay. And they're having a hard time finding that appropriate outlet to do it where the eyes of society aren't going to look down on them and say, oh, you just beat that person up. You're a bad person. No, 
that is the point of jujitsu. He was supposed to. He's really good at jujitsu. That doesn't make him a bad person. <laughs> that makes me bad at jujitsu. <laughs> you know. So I think that's a big part of it for me. Is just guys need outlets and places to learn this stuff where they're not going to be demonized or badgered or hounded by the modern doctrine, which I don't disagree with, but I do find it sets up a lot of struggle for mm. guys who don't necessarily know where to look for these resources to become more versed and accepted within this type of environment. So it's building that resilience, isn't it? Partially, partially. And just letting them know that just because they have certain tendencies doesn't make them wrong. They just need to know how to channel and use those tendencies. It's how it's, it's the results they're getting that are wrong. Not the fact that they have this going through them. It's, it's how they're choosing to, utilize it or not utilize it because you know full well Jono, if you are stressed out about something and you don't handle it you stick your head in the sand a month or two from now it's going to find its way out in other ways like you're going to be sitting there having a conversation with someone and you're just going to freak out or you know like you're going to not be able to perform in the bedroom because you're stressed out all the time or you're not going to be able to sit down with a family dinner and and you know be yourself because this thing is just going to intensify and intensify or tax man's going to come and slap a, you know, a notice on your door or something. So like a lot of these guys don't realize that the feelings that they're feeling and the frustrations that they're going through are literally because they haven't dealt with that little piece of aggression they need to get out or that, that bill they didn't pay or that, that conversation they had that they never apologized for. Like those are the types of things that go on to create all of these internal turmoils that these guys are dealing with. And quite frankly, like if you say you're sorry, you conduct yourself like a gentleman, you pay your bills on time and you kick the crap out of another guy when you feel that need to, or, you know, play, even if it's chess, but you, you have to compete, you know what I mean? Like whatever that looks like for you, you have to get out there and do it. It's part of our nature, but you're not wrong for it. You're not wrong for it. You just need to do what's not going to get you thrown in jail. <laughs> this is how I do it for that way. Is gaming. Yeah. Like gaming, I have to win. Like yeah. that's the whole purpose of it, right? You have to win. Like even if I was playing like things like FIFA, I have to beat the computer regardless. <laughs> Whether it's hard, easy or not. <laughs> yeah, I've I gotta beat him by 92 goals or I'm not playing. Yeah, like I have to win. This matter. <laughs> I will play until I win. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that to me is like just the big basis here. Is like a lot of guys they have the foundation to do great things, but they're just spinning their wheels and getting nowhere because they're not rectifying some of these core issues. They're not identifying their values. They're not identifying proper outlets and hobbies. They're giving too much of themselves in relationships when they should be saving a little bit more for themselves, taking better care of themselves. And so that's kind of the idea is like, I need to be better at it. Other guys identified that they need to be better at it. And so we flock together to hold each other accountable and get better at it. How did you come about this idea? You know, apart from the, the was it just people asking questions so that you got to the podcast with fathership? <sighs> That, I mean, the knighthood thing comes from youth, man, my childhood. I was that kid who, like, as soon as I could swing a stick, it was no longer a stick. It was a sword, and I had to go kill dragons, and I feel bad for the neighborhood dogs. But, <laughs> 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 but what I will say is uh, that, like... The dogs were hummed during no, this. <laughs> no, but I did, I did spear a bee's nest at one point. I, like, javelin through, uh, and I do, like... Looking back at it, when I was done running, I did feel kind of badly for, for destroying the bee's home, but it was it was an objective, and I needed to do it, and I did it, and then had immediate regrets when that thing hit the ground, and they all just... <laughs> but, yeah, so I was I wa always wanted to be a knight, but not because they got to swing swords and, and be warriors. Like, that part was kind of, okay, yeah, that's cool. Like, that's neat. I was always an, interested in, like, military warfare, especially ancient stuff. But what I always found fascinating was who the man behind the knight was, mm. whether it was a samurai, whether it was from England, whether he was a conquistador, whether he was, you know, like from doesn't matter where the quote unquote knight came from. They all exhibited similarities and where they were different ended up being where they found that strength, that edge over their opponent. 
but they always conducted themselves in very similar fashion. And a lot of times that fashion was grandiose. Knights weren't necessarily humble. They had the shiniest armor, the nicest horse, the brightest colors. They usually were followed by an entourage. You know, they, they, they knew how to show up and show out. But a lot of them were also very kind, very generous, very caring, took care of their plot and their people, um, were usually very feared in battle very respected and beloved by theirs. Like there was just things about the knight himself that as a kid I latched onto. And I was like, that is the kind of man I want to be. I want my family and friends to love me. I want the people in my town to respect me. And I want my enemies to fear the living bejesus out of me because that is the only way I'm going to live. Like I want someone to look at my car and say, yeah, I'm not breaking into that one. (laughs) (laughs) and so like yeah i guess as ever since i was a kid i was like i want to be feared loved respected generous like there were just all of these things that i wanted and i knew that it it was going to take a very specific kind of man conducting himself in a very specific manner to do it i lost sight of that for a long time and then when the men's group started to come about i was like no this is this is my chance to do exactly that so i'm going to yeah, I find it fascinating how it came about when you just decided to change from fathership to knighthood. Yeah, it, it was it was natural. It felt good. And the guys in the group, like we do have our Friday calls and the guys in the group expressed that like the father bit is good, but we talk more about what it means to be a man of character and, and action. So like it doesn't feel like it fits completely. So I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Let's just change things over. You guys are right. The people have spoken and, and you are correct. So let's, let's get this done. Like, oh, I don't care if I have to pay for more logos and stuff. That's I'd rather the message be clear, you know, <laughs> than the, the not change the, the branding and everything. So I don't mind making a few changes and looking like I don't know what I'm doing or, or have no idea what I want to do. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, making sure that this whole thing is dialed in when I do decide to launch it in grand fashion, that's more important to me. And how has it been for you leading this new type of community men group? Great. It's been fun. It has been fun, man. Like it's, I get to challenge people and myself. I get to sit here and guide conversations. I get to learn about different cultures. I get to learn about different people and how they tick and, and what's important to them. I get to share that stuff with me. My wife has noticed that I'm way more intentional and patient at home since starting this, um, that I can, I hold more true to my values because they're, I'm reminded of them every week, mm-hmm. you know, and reminded of them every day. And so I get in there and we've been able to like geek out and stuff. Like I'll post things about nights, what was important to them, what they valued, what made them powerful, asking guys what they value. My most recent post in there was what class are you? And one guy said that he would definitely be a paladin, Um, you know, the righteous, good, lawful character. And he was like, you're going to be a rogue, Scott. Like you're a rogue. That's who you are. Go read it. And like, I'm very familiar with that stuff because I was a geek, D&D geek and RPG geek back in the day. Final Fantasy Tactics was like my favorite game ever. So I played a lot of that and just, and again, those were all organizational makeup games. Like they were how to build an organization basically. So when I started running this group, it all just felt really natural and we have a lot of fun in there. And now I'm starting to throw a lot of creativity in there, like from how we grow the group invitation only and how we're going to do that and what we're going to do. Like one of the guys wants to run a quote unquote tavern within the group where guys just get together and talk trash and do what they got to do and then get out and have a, have a day of it. Cause now that COVID is a thing, pubs aren't a thing. So he wants to start one, you know, and, and within the digital confines of the group. And so I'm like, yeah, let's do that. That sounds fun. It's going to give people something they're lacking. It's going to be the hub of community. It's going to get people talking. I'm not that social of a creature. He is. So he's more than happy to get in there and do that. Like people are starting to seek out their own opportunities to be valuable within the group. Mm -hmm. And I like to foster that because a, it's less work that I have to do. And it's less of me trying to fit into a role I don't belong in. But it's also them being empowered to create and do things and and make friends and form relationships and just become a member of value and a face within the community that otherwise they might have just lurked and never spoke up in, you know? 
and I love how you're creating this, like this fits in really. Well, this is why I was so amazed. Yeah, why I wanted you so much to be on here because it talks so much about digital leadership, like creating this new digital world mm -hmm. that you're creating, right? Like the digital tavern tev or pub, mm -hmm. right? Because we can't go out and sit in a pub normally and drink with a bunch of mates. Doesn't mean we can just buy some drinks at home and sit and chat with our mates online. That's, right? it. That's it. We have virtual meetings, we have virtual conversations. It's the same thing. It, I mean, it's not, obviously, it's still, you know, we still have video, we still have a microphone, we still hear and see each other. Yeah. It's like, it's. It's just, you know, you're, like, you're, you're going to have a cheeky Australian bartender, is what's going to happen today. Like, <laughs> well, the thing is, the, the bartender may change every day, every week, right? Or every day. It doesn't <laughs> but the thing is, you know, everything has changed now with this digital world. Like 10, 15 years ago, online gaming wasn't even, well, was a thing, but you don't have like voice chats. That's new, mm -hmm. right? So, like you can hear what people are talking about. You could see what people are typing, mm -hmm. like a text conversation chat, you know, RPGs, online RPGs and stuff like that. But nowadays we have voice. We yeah. even have, you know, video on Twitch. You could see the person playing the game. Right, <laughs> you, can you can watch them rage connect. quit when you kill yeah. them again. You can watch them rage quit. You can do, you know, you can have proper interactions as if you was sitting next to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what this new digital world has brought to us. And I think this is what's so important to navigate and create, like you said, give someone a platform to create what they couldn't. Yeah, and for you know, esports is one of the biggest industries in the world right now. When back i i remember parents going why would anyone watch someone play video games i don't know but there's enough people who want to do it that it has created an industry which is now one of the leading industries in the world so like adapt evolve you have to <laughs> exactly and that's the same with digital leadership like whether you're leading a team online whether you're building a business online even a community right even yeah. if you a, a company culture how are you building it? Are you in, are you implementing weekly um, conversation sessions? Mm -hmm. Well, the yeah, the online culture, like a lot of people, when they think of businesses, they think of what message they're sending out to their clients, like as a business owner, not what message they're sending out to their potential employees. And the branding, like your employee branding or employer branding, in my opinion, is more important than your your service branding. So for podcast bay like the branding for that organization is very much make your own hours love your life don't care if you're dressed for work you can literally show up to the call in your pajamas i don't care like that's not what this is about like the the, the business logo is two crossed swords over a, a skull that's made out of a microphone like we don't take ourselves seriously <laughs> And our clientele are a bunch of jokesters. They're very good at what they do. They're intelligent people, but they have a sense of humor. They're, you know, they're, they're relaxed about things. My biggest thing with Podcast Bay is meet your deadlines. Don't make me call you and ask where something is or isn't. Like I have folders and spreadsheets and everything is there for a reason. Follow those. And I, you'll, you, the only time you'll hear from me is thank you. You're awesome. I appreciate you. Keep killing it. Here's where we are as a company. Here's a Christmas bonus. That's when you'll hear from me. Miss a deadline though. And I will be your worst nightmare. <laughs> and people know that. Like I've literally called my employee's wife at 11 PM and gone, I have something due tomorrow. Where is it? And she's like, I'll put them on the phone. Thanks. Like I will hunt you down through your, your relationships. If you miss a deadline for me, like that's how I am. Right. So, so she's like, I'll put him on the phone. Sorry. And I'll also make sure he gets it done. And I was like, thank you, lady. I appreciate you. Like you should come work for me. You could be a taskmaster here. <laughs> but when things are going well and, and everyone knows their role and they do their role, it is the most relaxed, fun, laid back work environment, period. Like it is what you make it in your home office at that point with the knighthood. I knew I wanted it to be more of a show up, bring your best self, give it everything you've got type of environment. And so I had to, I have to make the branding as such. Like when you walk in that room, you're not like, Oh, these guys are just going to sit here telling racist jokes and, and being assholes all day. No, 
like when you get in there, you notice there's a very distinct kind of person. There's a goal in mind. There's a, everything about it has to do with creating yourself or building yourself into a person that you perceive as excellence. Like excellence is the goal. And so that's going to bleed off into everything else I do. But that is the place I've chosen excellence over in podcast Bay. Yeah. I want you to be amazing at what you do, but excellence is not the cornerstone consistent quality, timely pr production is the cornerstone there. And so like the, yeah, very much the message I put out to different and at work with, with the girls in my not so digital job, it's, I want to give you a fun place to work. I'm going to be accommodating to your schedule, but communication is key here. We must communicate everything at all times so that if you need a babysitter, if something goes on, if the store doesn't open, if like, if, if, if we all know, and we can all adapt together. So communication is very much the nature of the brand there, you know, so different values for different places. And, and you just kind of have to figure out what works for you and the kinds of people you want to surround yourself with and then portray those values from within yourself. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Makes sense to me. I'm sure it will listen uh, to the listeners as well, especially those that are building a digital business or leading in the digital world is, you know, it's so much has changed because we're not being face to face anymore. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we can't still build a similar culture or yeah. Online. Well, again, and and myself, like I'm trying to like the knighthood is about traditional values, values that existed centuries ago. You know, go out and chop wood for the person who can't. It's very hard to show that online. You know, like it, it's not easy to do to create something in the new world that communicates properly traditional values, delayed gratification. I'm doing a thing about delayed gratification on a platform that is all about instant gratification. <laughs> that creates a little bit of a disconnect when you're like, Hey guys, you know, what's more important than dopamine serotonin. Like, 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 and all of the dopamine just like, hey, you know, like that, that does create a little bit of a challenge where communicating the proper values comes through on a delivery aspect. But that doesn't mean you can't figure out how to deliver it, how to modernize it, how to create something that flies in a Zoom room instead of a conference room, you know, finding something that flies in a Facebook room versus at the bar, you know, like, man my wife and i when we started we were online only because we lived like i think 16 hour drive away from each other and so we would call each other and watch movies on video chat because we couldn't watch movies together in the same room it's basically that all over again for me it's nothing different you know i've, I've already had long distance relationships and they they worked out pretty good so i'm going to keep putting my eggs in that basket you know <laughs> like I love I love that because very similar to me and my fiance, um, we've known each other since fourteen, fifteen, and then we didn't actually date until we were like twenty, I think, twenty three, like university. We didn't we didn't make that shift right between do we stay friends or do we get together? Yeah, yeah. right. It was, it, but we've known each other previously before that for like. 10, 15 years. And then obviously now we're together um, for about 10 years now. But our relationship still all started off online as well. Like it was back in the days when um, online profile MySpace and stuff was still around. That's where I met my wife. I met my wife on MySpace. Yeah. Wow. There you go. So very similar. Um, and that's why we kept in contact. And then throughout all the city university, it was like, when I start when I started driving and had more freedom, I was like, oh hey, let's meet up and catch up and then stayed in contact, MSN Messenger, mm -hmm. all of that transition through the online world to to net and then Facebook and then obviously now, right? Snapchat is when we started getting in trouble. <laughs> Snapchat, <laughs> Snapchat is when our relationship went to the next level, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's, it's so it's a lot of the same thing. Like if you guys can make that work, it doesn't surprise me that digital leadership is not a jump for you. 
because you already know how to cultivate a meaningful relationship using the tools that are provided to you digitally. And I had to do the same thing. And so now when I can, now when I know I have to communicate with various people on different things, like I already know that it's possible. I know the results that can come of it. I'm not sitting there going, but how do we make this work? And are we sure it's going to work? I'm over those hurdles. I'm like, okay, how do we most effectively reach the hearts of these people, the minds of these people? How do we get in and infect them with our message, with our ideals, with our emotion and all that? Because that's the hard part. When you get online, writing that post in a way that actually touches on your emotions and triggers theirs is the difficult part. Writing the post isn't. So it's it's less about what am I going to use and more about what am I going to say? What do I want these people to understand? What's my meaning here that I'm trying to pass along? And once you nail that down, it doesn't matter what platform you're on, you're dangerous. Like you're in a good place right there. The second you understand how to communicate your ideologies in an attractive and enticing manner. I can literally tell someone, hey man, you want to go to the playground later and be nights? And they'll be like, what? You're a 32 year old man, grow up. <laughs> like, but if I look at them and say like, you know what? Knights were gentlemen. They served their communities. They were excellent motivators. They really put in time and effort. They managed their financial house. They were great lovers, great fighters, great friends, great husbands. Do you want to be that person? Yeah, absolutely. Let's be that person. Okay, now let's go to the playground, beat each other up. Like, you know, <laughs> but like, that's kind of the idea is like, you need to know what you're trying to say, but know exactly how to say it in a way that means something to the person you're communicating, whether it's a team member, whether it's a potential customer, whether it's your wife or your kids, like the, you can never be better at communication. Like you can never be too good at communication. You can always learn to communicate your soul better. And that to me is, is where digital leadership really takes off is once you master that you're gold. Yeah. The thing is with um, digital leadership, you know, there's so many ways about it is you know, leading online, but it's also how you leverage the tools online and, and how you use it effectively. Right. Especially with communication. There's such a communication is just forever a, a challenging thing for all any organizations. Oh yeah. And the funny part is like tools. What tools do I use, Jono? I bet you, you couldn't find a website. I bet you my LinkedIn profile is like 30 years old. Like it, it's older than I am at this point. It's, it hasn't been updated in so long. I don't have any cohesive place to find me where it's all included. Like I don't have, I've never had a website. I've never, I don't get caught up on that. I'm like, okay, I've got a PayPal form and I've got a microphone and I know I can deliver the goods. Let's do this. Like I'll send you the PayPal. I'll set up a Google drive and away we go. Like I'm very much nomadic online. I don't have a hub or a home. And so for me, leveraging the tools has been 100% about personal brand, my reputation and what and how I choose to communicate on Facebook. That is where all my business comes from. And that's all your right. follow as well, isn't it? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like none of, none of these, you know, go through this process and go through this upsell and then go through this autoresponder. <laughs> no, no. It's like, I, I literally reach out to someone in the DMs. This look good to you. Yeah. Okay. You're in. Let's do this. <laughs> like, here's, the, here's the PayPal link. Here's the yeah. PayPal. Yeah. That's it. Here's the PayPal link. Let's do this. Like a hundred percent. That's how I've always done things like contractual agreements are not necessarily something I've ever worried about. I'm always like, spit shake, let's do this, right? So like, it's one of those things like where my clients are concerned, there's always been a lot of honor there. Yes, there are contracts in place. Yes, we have to do that because of legality. But at the same time, like I partner with people I know will not screw me because mm -hmm. they have an honor code, because they have a code of conduct, because they have a sense of conscience and integrity and all that like because that's what my personal brand puts out to the world that's what i show the world you know like it's and the whispers about me when it's not you know i've, I've seen screenshots of what people say about me when i'm not around and and honestly i would never say that stuff about myself it's it's really nice stuff you know it's it's very uplifting it's positive it makes my heart smile <laughs> the occasion i've seen some of those screenshots and um 
I had yeah. to read them. And I was like, yeah, that's 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 him to the T. Yeah, and so like when I look at that, I'm like, okay, well, that is obviously what I'm trying to communicate out there as a value system is is working. And so I just do more of that. And so that's really where your power is, is how are you communicating your value system? Who are you surrounding yourself around? Because if you're one of those people who doesn't like to show up, is lazy about it, doesn't meet deadlines, well, then that's exactly who you're going to attract and your organization is going to fail. But if you lead yourself through being a person of integrity, morals, upstanding values, make sure they always hit deadlines, punctual. I was like 20 minutes early for our meeting today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Punctuality is a value of mine. So guess what happens on my business calls? Guys are 20 minutes. I've had guys come in an hour early and log into my waiting rooms because I might be there. I might be there an hour early to my own meeting. Like I might be. And if I am, we have a bunch of pre-talk and banter and it's fun. <laughs> but like, because I value punctuality, so do they. Because I value deadlines, so do they. And so it's a lot of like what you are is what you're going to find in mm -hmm. the people who follow you and the people who love you. So you attract what you are. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I truly believe that as well. I truly believe you. You, you attract what you are and who you are at the time you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you see negative things coming your way, then you, that's the self awareness part, right? It's just take a deep dive and goes, did I feel something like, did, am I, you know, second, you know, you, you kind of self doubt yourself. It's like, where, where, where did I come from? Like, did I self doubt myself a little bit there or did I attract some sort of negative thoughts? Like, where did that come? Like, where did this come from in, into my life? Why is, why is it here? Well, I've always, I've always gotten a kick out of Facebook because Facebook is a place where you find everyone, right? Everyone. And so some of the people that I've known my whole life have turned into chronic complainers. And when you look at their Facebook feeds, it's always like, oh, I'm not feeling well today. Oh, I'm, I'm depressed today. Oh, I'm, I wish people would just treat me with the respect I deserve. Oh, I just, and then like, you get into a conversation with them out in the world and you're like, how are you? And they're like, I'm good. Everything's good. Blah, blah, blah. And they don't realize that like, I actually see exactly how you show up every day. I know what's going on. I don't buy this. Right. And so what I find a lot of people are doing is they don't understand that showing up isn't like, Jono, you need to move at 3 PM today. Okay. I'm going to show up and I'm going to be there. Showing up is, am I, Oh man, this furniture is heavy. Oh, my back is sore. <sighs> Can't wait till this is over while I'm there. Or am I like, Hey man, what do you need me to move next? Man, this is going to be great when this is over. Do you want, do you want lunch? I'll get it. Like, you know, like how you show up is more in that it's when you make posts online. If you look at my Facebook profile, I've only started peddling my business again lately because I want more clients. But when things are, and it's literally just sharing testimonials and sharing what my clients are achieving, like their successes, right? It's not like, I am so great. I am awesome. I do good work. It's more like, oh, this is a great review and it made me smile. I'm going to share this. So, but if you look at my profile when I don't need clients, when I don't need money, <laughs> it's literally all my kids. <laughs> Calvin and Hobbes comics, smart ass remarks to things I've seen or like memes. And it's literally like, I lost my guitar pick through my, my guitar and a guy standing behind blinds, like <laughs> waving, you know, like it's, it's that kind of stuff. It's, it's my personality, my values, what's important to me coming through. And there's none of this posturing. I am the expert at blank. Like I don't even talk about podcasting on my shit. Yeah. I don't because no one clicks like on that stuff. No one cares about that stuff. Like that's not what my profile's for. Like go over to my business page. It's curated. It's good. There's a, there's a Christmas guide coming up or a holiday guide. If you want to buy a podcast or something, I think I threw out like 12 ideas on there that you can go buy a podcast or no one on my personal profile cares. You know, <laughs> <laughs> If I started like going up and, and like doing knighthood stuff on my personal profile, that would alienate all of the women on my profile. <laughs> They'd be like, um, okay, but we're not men. Right. So like, I'm a big fan of curating. I'm a big fan of being very attentive to how you show up and where you show up. You know, I'm not going to be my quote unquote, full blown masculine competitive self on my profile, man. The feminists who love me would tear me apart. 
<laughs> like it's just how it happens. So I go to a bunch of guys who also need that outlet and we talk there and then we go back out into society without that need for competition, without that whatever. And we just do what's important to us in a way more intentional and conducive manner in an appropriate manner rather than being all frustrated and bothered and sore and angry and all that stuff. We're like, no, life is cool. It's chill. We, we got all of our aggressions and all of our frustrations out and now we can go do our push-ups and serve our communities and be better men. And that's kind of just the idea. Very chill, but yeah, no, there's how you show up in everything you do is really important. It's one thing if you do the dishes for your wife. It's another thing if you invite her to do the dishes with you and you guys are smiling and whipping the towels at each other and splashing each other with water. They're going to become very different things and one leads to better places very quickly i'll tell you so like you 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 gotta think about how am i showing up when i do things for my wife am i being begrudging or am i like the most enthusiastic happy to do it guy on the planet when i want something am i being meek and like hey babe do you feel like having fun tonight or am i being like I would love to do this. Let's go out. Let's do this. You know, are you seducing your wife? Are you doing the things she likes? Are you lavishing her with the things that she enjoys? Time, attention, you know, um, activities, memories. And when you do, are you like staring at your wallet going, oh my God, I don't know if I can afford this. Well then pick a free activity and do it wholeheartedly. You know, <laughs> like, like how you show up and everything you do is very, very important. And it's if you posture, if you fake, if you are misaligned with who you really are and what you really value, you can only keep the game up so long. It will eventually fall apart one way or another. So communicating your clear, true values is very important online and offline, digitally or analog, you know, <laughs> very important stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. And I had this conversation with another interview was how do you feel about the personas that people are putting on to be online? Like, especially for streamers, right? Streamers struggle with this big time because they feel like they have to put up a different face or a different persona, right? Or be a different person behind the camera as if they were, you know, in person. Yeah, I, I've noticed it with streamers. I see a lot of it in the business circles. Like everyone in the business circle, you you have to have yourself figured out. You cannot not know things. You have a different mask. Like, yeah. You have different masks. Streamers, they have to dye their hair bright blue and use vulgar language and, you know, like all that. But for me, it, it's – I look at the streamers who are real. And I know, like, don't get me wrong, when the guys have bright blue hair and they're entertaining and they're fun, like, I dig that. I do. When the, the cosplay models are getting in, they have all their intricate, crazy looks and they're all absolutely stunning. Like, I do love that. That definitely excites me both on both ends from an entertainment value purpose. Mm -hmm. But the person who entertains me is not necessarily the person I'm going to trust with my life. Yeah. Okay. So, like, that's the issue is, like, if you're looking for deeper connection, you need something deeper than entertainment value. Mm -hmm. you need information you need genuine care you need integrity you need to be a person of value and that's where that happens is like yes you could be the most entertaining person in the world and have a bunch of followers but if they don't respect you they're not going to buy from you they're not going to support you they're going to just literally show up to gossip and trash you aka the youtube following you know <laughs> so there's a there's a lot of things that go into that but as far as personas go yeah, some industries you need them. Absolutely. I would say so. Um, I have a different persona for, again, everywhere I show up in my life. When I'm in that men's group, I'm holding myself proud, tall. My wife would almost say conceited because when I show up with her, I'm not that high on myself. I'm not that look who I am and look, look, I've done like 2000 pushups this month. This is awesome. <laughs> if I tell her that she's going to be like, so I just like your arms and chest, whatever. <laughs> I don't care how you got there, but the guys, they love knowing that I crunched out 2000 pushups, you know, and stuff like that. Like they're interested in that. So yeah, I have a different mask I wear for every single person until I'm alone. And then it's just me. And then I have to sit there and figure out, okay, am I satisfied with the way this person has showed up in every single opportunity I've had to show up? The answer is never yes. 
I always find a place where I could have done better, could have said that differently, could have been more sensitive, could have been more aggressive, could have been, you know, this, that, or the other thing. I don't beat myself up for it. I put it in the after action review where I'm like, yep, won't say that next time. That had a, a really crummy response, you know, won't throw the kids that high next time because it scared the living out of them. You know, like there's just certain things where I adapt as I go and I learn my lessons, but I always kick back at the end of the day and go, where did I show up? How did I show up? Am I happy with that? And did it positively impact other people? And so persona or not, I think that as long as you're being real about how it's all working out for you, (laughs) that's the important part. Like that's the really important part. No, I agree. I wholeheartedly agree because I show up differently in different groups. Like when I go, you know, hang out, want to be the that coach type person that I am, right? Mm-hmm. I want to just be who I was previously, knowing them as a mate, as a good friend. Like mm-hmm. you know, that's that's who I want to know. I don't know. And then you know, at work, you have a different persona. Like you don't want to be the you know, the public speaker, the one that's you know about motivating and positive and impacting and changing lives and all this stuff, right? Oh well, yeah, <laughs> it, like all I can think about it, way yet, especially with with some of your colleagues. Could you imagine being unspoken truths of digital leadership while playing Call of Duty? <laughs> hey, right. how are you managing your stress? For a grenade. <laughs> 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 I'm barely hanging on, man. That's why I'm here. Like that's, it's just not the, it's not the platform for it. Literally what you're doing is you're calling people noobs and laughing at them, like failing miserably. And like, you're all uproariously, like just competing and trying to kill each other and gun each other down. And that is the more fun chirpy environment that I'm talking about with the knighthood is like when we're all doing our challenges and a guy misses a day, Everyone pipes up and they're like, front of the back of the line, man, you got to start over. Like, sucks to be you. Fourth time you've done this, but you know, it's either going to stick or it's not. Like, and we all have fun like that with each other. Whereas I would definitely not approach my child like that if she failed at something. You know, if, if Scotland was like trying to do a push up and she only got through like half of one, I'd be like, oh, oh, sucks to be you. No, oh, yeah. no. <laughs> no start over. You got to do. No, that's not how that works. Right. So, like, I firmly believe that personas are important. You do have to put certain things on, but like, there's certain personas that just don't work, you know, because they're not actually how the person feels. Like, When you see a guy out there trying to be a pickup artist when he has no confidence around women, you can see it. You can see it. When you see a guy trying to be the manliest man on the planet, but he himself is not and has not done the things to feel that confident with his masculinity, you see it. When a woman is trying to prove herself in business, but she doesn't truly believe deep down that she belongs there, you you see it like you notice that she herself feels like she doesn't belong there because it comes out as a lot of like cheerleading rah 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 i'm a woman and i am here yes but what do you do and how can you help me that's what i'd like to know you know so like there's there's a whole lot of that that you see where there's disconnects between who people truly are and who they want to put out into the world and that is where you run into problems because if you're just putting out an avenue of who you actually are out there You're never going to run into any issues. It's when you start fabricating personas is where you run into your problems. Yeah, I think that's important. I think it's important just to find out what works for you and who you really are. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing we talked about as well is people just not being able to find themselves and know who they are or who they want to be even. Or be honest about it. Being honest. If I took like, oh, there's something I'm going to be doing in the knighthood soon, past, present, future. We're going to do the whole Christmas Carol thing. And I'm dreading it in a way because like my past is awful. Like there's a reason why my friends literally call me a rogue. It's because like I have been very roguish in my life. I've done things with very loose morals. And then the person I am today isn't that person at all. The person I am today is more like my child self who wanted to be pure, honest, do the right things, you know, all that. I've, I've reconnected with that person and I'm very grateful, but then future me is a whole different level of grandeur and, and grandiose and magnificence. Like I, I cannot wait to become that lion. Like he's going to be a beast. I cannot wait to be that. 
but I can't just jump up and pretend I'm him right now. Mm. Self-awareness is very important. Like you have to be very honest about your past and very intentional about reconciling it. You have to be very honest about who you are right now and very intentional about portraying exactly that nothing fake or, or not real. And then your future, you have to be very intentional about mapping it out clearly and taking the steps to grow into it. And that to me is where I am. I'm now mapping out my future and growing into that man. And that's going to be pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so for those that want to find out more about what you do, where can they find you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> now that you're going rogue, right? You're going rogue, but you're also creating community. So how does that work? <laughs> so you can find me on Facebook. Uh, you can literally just Scott Doucette on Facebook and follow me on my personal profile. Podcast Bay Productions has a page if you're interested in the podcasty stuff. The Knighthood is by invite only. So you can connect with me on my DMs on Facebook and tell me you want to be part of it. But I'll be spending some time with you first. Because there are definitely some people I want to waste my first invite on first. So I'll spend some time with you. I'll get to know the person you are, what caliber of, uh, of person you're going to bring to the table. And because uh, John and I have known each other for like online for like two years or more now. And I literally just went, hey, John, I like you. Can you can we do something? Like, <laughs> so I put my people through a very long process. But if you're interested in the knighthood, I, I you know, we could definitely get to talking about that through DM. And then my Instagram profile is Scott underscore Doucette, and it's literally just photos of my beautiful family because my wife is stunning. My kids are adorable. And every once in a while, I flash a picture of my beard on there. So, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Scott. Well, thank you for having me. It's been, it's been a while since I accepted any media um, appearances. And, but when you reached out with a show about leadership, I was like, damn, I have to, I can't, I got to climb out from under my rock now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone does that's listening. Don't have to wait for two years on the waiting or more for the waiting list. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, no, we'll, we'll definitely throw something together. If people are interested. The thing with the knighthood was that it's because it's something I watched Scott brew over time and it wasn't just an overnight thing. It no. took years to come about to this point. <laughs> but yeah. when he invited me, I was like, yep, definitely in. That is definitely me. Definitely happy to help. Definitely happy to see how I can add value and you know, change this way of digital leadership as well. You know, Put this into place and help Scott grow this night, night realm or carvery, <laughs> table, empire, whatever it's going to be. It's going to be something good. I can see that because the community right now, especially in the online community needs this this group this platform you know to do what scott is doing with with people in it and and the code of contact and discovering and finding themselves all that is such a, a huge thing and it's something that i've been working on you know especially with digital leadership and with limit break lifestyle it's all about breaking free limits breaking free limitations you know it's the the values align and there's not enough out there there's only so much of us that can do it by ourselves. We have to join together and grow and create communities like these and partner up with each other to to make a difference in the world because there's not enough people that's making that difference or when, wanting to step up and show up to, to take that challenge. But we are willing to do so because we didn't have what we have, you know, what we've had missing, I'll say. You know. That's fair. That's fair. I think we've become what we were missing and now we want to help other people find that. Yeah. Like we didn't have the guide that we wanted when we was growing up and we don't feel like the next generation should suffer the same thing. hundred percent, hundred percent. So much for this and we'll catch up soon. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>